In this video, I want to talk about a major event coming down the pike for Ethereum that people are anticipating will impact the price of Ether. It's called the triple halving. It's going to happen pretty soon on the grand scheme of things and actually see a lot of wrong information about this floating around out there. And in this video, I want to tell you the truth about this insanely important event and what I personally think it's going to do to the price of Ether. I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis and also a crypto holder myself. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain chain master so if that's something that you're interested in then smash that like button down below for the youtube algorithm and subscribe to this channel and if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step start to finish then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today all right so what is this big event that's coming down the pipe for ethereum well it's called the triple halving okay so what is this again i see a lot of misconceptions about what this even means and which event it's referring to so let's define what the halving is in the first place. So the halving actually comes from how Bitcoin works in the first place. So every four years, Bitcoin has hard coded into the protocol something called the halving event, where every four years, the amount of new Bitcoin created gets cut in half, you know, hence the halving. You can see a chart that illustrates this here on my screen uh, with the last major notable halving events, you know, in 2012, 2016, and 2020. Every four years, you can see the block reward for new Bitcoin being mined getting cut in half from 25 and the 12.5 and the 6.25 because that's how the Bitcoin protocol works. Basically, whenever you send money on the Bitcoin protocol, miners who run the network help include new transactions in the blocks. And whenever they do that, they solve cryptographic puzzles. And the winner of this is the miner who includes the transaction into the block and they're rewarded with Bitcoin. And that Bitcoin is created by the blockchain itself. That's what the whole mining process is about. And every four years, that amount of Bitcoin and paid to miners, every single block gets cut in half, hence the halving. So that's how Bitcoin works. But now let's talk about the triple halving for Ethereum. So Ethereum's, you know, triple halving is referring to an event that's coming down the pike for Ethereum. It's going to only happen once. Bitcoin halving happens every four years. We have one event coming down the pike for Ethereum that's going to have the effect of three different halvings combined into one. So what is that? Well, a lot of people are thinking that it's the EIP-1559 network upgrade that's coming down the pike for Ethereum on August 4th, but that's not really what the triple halving is talking about. It's okay, it's a pretty easy mistake to make. I even have made this mistake in the past. We're all like pioneers in this space trying to understand exactly how this technology works. And I was actually alerted this by a subscriber who, you know, commented this on one of our live streams we do on this channel Monday through Friday. Just turn on notifications down below. Make sure you subscribe. You'll find out about those whenever we go live. But they helped me see this more clearly. That Ethereum's triple halving event actually refers to Ethereum transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake and what that's going to do to Ethereum's monetary policy, particularly the issuance of new ETH created on the chain itself. That's what the triple halving really is. And now let me explain how that works and why it means it's a triple halving. So Ethereum is migrating from proof of work to proof of stake. So, you know, right now, Ethereum basically works like Bitcoin, like I was talking about a second ago, where if you want to help maintain and run the Ethereum network, then you essentially are a miner. Whenever new transactions are created, if you're going to include them into those blocks, then you, you know, compete to solve cryptographic puzzles and to get financially incentivized to do this, to get rewarded, you're paid by the blockchain with mining rewards. But Ethereum right now is migrating from proof of work to proof of stake as a part of its transition to Ethereum 2.0. And this is the major event on the roadmap that's likely coming towards the end of this year, beginning of next year, where proof of stake is basically going to get turned on for the Ethereum that we use right now because both chains are going to get merged together. And this is when the triple halving event is going to occur. Now, let me show you what that means and why it's important. So right now, Ethereum's issuance per year is is, you know, about 4%, which basically means the Ethereum supply is increasing by about 4% a year. But whenever a proof of stake is turned on, it's going to drop significantly. And this is where the triple halving comes into play. So basically, if you take 4%, you have it, you go down to 2%, you have it again, you go to 1%, you have it one more time, and you go to 0.5%. You have it three times or hence triple halving. And you can see that reflected in the data here. So this sharp drop off right here is what's expected to happen whenever the proof of stake uh, implementation gets merged into the ETH chain that we use today. And you can actually see the max network issuance based upon the number of people who are actually running the validators. And we arrive at this 0.5% figure based on how much ETH we think is going to get staked on the network at that time. And we think it's going to be about 0.5% based on you know 10 million ETH validating. And if you actually check the statistics about how many people are or how much ETH is staked right now on the Ethereum 
Ethereum 2.0 beacon chain, you can see it's about 6 million ETH stake, 6.5 million, which again is pretty close to that 0.5% issuance here. All right, so that's the triple halving event that's coming down the pike for ETH. So again, when is this going to happen? Well, it's supposed to be towards the end of this year, more conservatively at the beginning of 2022. It's hard to say exactly for sure. We typically get an announcement about these things, about sort of the official launch date, you know, maybe a few weeks before it's going to happen because it's so hard to forecast that far out. But that's what it is. And it's not actually the EIP 1559 network upgrade that people are talking about. You know, the London hard fork that's supposed to come up on August 4th, which is, you know, just a few weeks away. So let's talk about that for a second. Basically, that's the upgrade for Ethereum. It's not actually part of Ethereum 2.0 that does a lot of different things. But one of the things people are most excited about is actually burning ETH whenever new transactions are created. So basically, if I send you ETH, then that fee is going to get split up into two parts, the base fee and the minor tip. And the actual base fee, because we're on Ethereum 1.0 right now, can get burned. And if there's enough network activity, that can cause ETH to actually become deflationary. So now let's talk about the price of Ether. Like, what do I think this triple halving event, what, what impact do I think it's going to have? So first of all, let's talk about why, what, what's affecting ETH's price in the first place? Well, the price is basically determined by supply and demand. How much ETH is there and how many people want to buy it relative to the number of people who want to sell it. So let's look at the supply side of things because ultimately that's, you know, what's getting changed here. Whenever we move from proof of work to proof of stake on ETH 2.0, then the issuance is going to drop significantly effective to the rate of three halving events all at one time. And that's significantly going to impact the supply of ETH because way less ETH will get created on the network than it currently is. The inflation is going to be very, very minimal. And so that effectively is going to shrink the future supply of ETH compared to the future supply of ETH if this change we're not going to go into effect. So in addition to that, whenever we move to proof of stake, we're going to have this new incentive to hold ETH and not sell it for people who are staking on the network and actually validating transactions on ETH 2.0. Because right now, if you're a miner, you don't necessarily have an incentive to hold ETH. Like if you're mining new transactions in the Ethereum network, you have an incentive to basically take the ETH and, you know, sell it to pay, or at least sell part of it to pay for, you know, your mining equipment. And maybe you hold some of that because you expect the Ethereum price to appreciate long term, but you still have a strong incentive to sell it. But when you're staking it, you're a validator on ETH 2.0, then you have, you know, incentive to hold ETH. Well, you actually have to hold ETH in order to become a validator in the first place. You need to hold 32 Ether. And so we have a large number of people who are holding that amount of money and they can't sell that principal part. Then a large amount of ETH is going to get locked up and effectively is, is not going to be doing anything, which will effectively impact the supply side of Ether for people who want to buy it. There's basically going to be less people selling it if they're staking it. Now, they might be selling, you know, their staking rewards, but those are still way smaller than their principal. Maybe five, six, 6% of what their principal is on an annual basis. And so those are two major things that impact the supply of ETH after this change happens. Now, that's just one part of the equation. What about the demand? So it depends on what's happening with the overall demand for Ether, the asset itself, at the time this upgrade happens. So lately, you know, cryptocurrency prices have been going down and, you know, the entire market's basically correlated. It's really hard to fight that momentum working against you. And so if the same type of, you know, trend is happening whenever this merge happens, then that means the demand is basically dropping for Ethereum cryptocurrency. And I wouldn't think that this network upgrade would have a significant impact on the price of Ether at that time if the demand is, you know, decreasing because the demand ultimately has to stay the same or increase in order for this, you know, change to really impact the price of Ether. Now, that's just on the short term, because long term, of course, I do anticipate the demand of these cryptocurrencies increasing significantly over time, especially if you zoom out on a multi-year basis. And over a long period of time, I definitely anticipate that this will impact the price of Ether for all the reasons I just laid out. Basically, if you limit the supply and the demand increases, then that will have a major impact on positive price appreciation over the long term. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you wouldn't get your hands dirty. How can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step, start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I help people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Daffy Diversity.